So, uh, <laughs> our next topic uh, that I do want to talk about once I make this merge here into this highway um, involves my girl Tulsi. I know I'm talk I, I feel like I talk about Tulsi a lot, but I like her and I feel like she does, I mean, you know, all the coverage that she's getting uh, is totally unfair. By the way, I have released a new podcast of Taboo Table Talk that does uh, cover partly about Tulsi, partly about how NPR has gone down the drain, and I'm pretty sure this might be, like, the, the thing where I either, if I ever get to, because I've done NPR interviews before, but if I ever get to do NPR interviews again, it, it, it's going to end up being like, oh, you had a sharp take on Robin Young, uh, and I'm going to be like, yeah, because uh, there's a lot of propaganda on your fucking radio station your national public radio station that is funded by private entities. Uh, so, go check that out if you want. Um, but, uh, Tulsi Gabbard just announced that as of the, this recording, she has not done anything about this yet, but she may, basically made an announcement that she is going to be boycotting the uh, next Democratic debates. And, and a lot of the reasons why she's doing it is, is a lot of the reasons that I, uh, that uh, myself and, and a, a lot of different um, progressive talking heads, progressive pundits, progressive YouTube commenters, whatever you want to call us, uh, have said. Uh, which is that these debates are nonsense. It's democracy for commercials, is what I've called it. That's what it is. It's just commercializing the idea of democracy. It's selling ads. Um, no one really gets to talk. No one really gets to know uh, what these people are about, what these policies are about. And uh, it's at 12. And they didn't break it up into two nights to do a six on six to have a little bit more in-depth of coverage. Uh, because they don't want these ideas to really be talked about. They want these ideas to go into these bite-sized Twitter, you know, hashtags and stir up a bunch of people, you know, without really explaining what these ideas mean. So, you know, the last Chuck Todd in his very finite wisdom will say something about Medicare for all. Some people have said it's socialism. Uh, 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 is it, uh, so, I mean, socialism, because healthcare, it's going to save a lot of lives and uh, possibly correct the faults of a very corrupt healthcare system. Socialism, socialism, socialism. And no one's really going to be able to give a, 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 an, a good answer that actually means something. Um, so we have to boil it down into one minute or 45 second answers so that we can go down the line uh, and have six candidates that talk about uh, private insurance needs to help everybody and that's what private insurance is going to do and there's going to be Bernie Sanders that's going to say Medicare for all that's the only way we can do it uh, and then you have uh, possibly Tulsi's idea where Medicare for all is something that needs to be done, but we need to have a choice because not everybody wants to opt into Medicare for all and they can keep their thing and see maybe maybe later they'll want to opt into it uh, and, and basically using the market to pit, uh, pit the uh, you know private insurance companies against the public option um, and regulate the private insurance companies so that they can't fuck over the American people because the pharmaceutical industries are also part of rising healthcare costs and uh, that's not going to be said in 45 seconds and everybody's going to be like look at look at these candidates pitching that we should end up becoming uh, uh, communists because of socialism this is like you just said two different things right so uh, she's boycotting it I'm not sure I'm not sure what the end game is, right? Because she also calls out corruption from the DNC, that the DNC uh, uh, is actively rigging the um, rigging the primaries, which they are. It's evident. 
They're coming up with these random ass fucking polls and they're just like, well, we're gonna choose the ones where we're just not gonna mention a bunch of the candidates' names that we're scared of. Uh, and we're gonna say like Joe Biden and Mayor Pete and uh, Elizabeth Warren. We like them, so they're gonna be said a lot. Um, and then we're gonna be like, we're gonna say, yeah, 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 so they did that shit a lot, right? There were like reports coming out that Tulsi Gabbard wasn't even like on a bunch of the polls that they were using. Like they weren't even asked about Tulsi Gabbard. Um, so she's boycotting it. And, uh, at the end of the day, whatever decision she makes is the decision she makes, and I will hopefully uh, see what the what the end result of this is. What's the purpose of this? Uh, but she still has my support. I think she's a genuine candidate. Um, I think the media likes to smear her a lot, and I think people like to take her out of context or um, throw biases that they have onto her. We saw that recently with the Ellen debacle where she basically came out and said, we do, we need to hear this, you know, kindness for everybody idea. And like I said, I like the idea of kindness for everybody. Um, and Tulsi came out and said it, and a lot of people firestormed against her um, because they were like, you're supporting a war. And it's like, she didn't say anything about Bush. She didn't say she was supporting what Bush did. She said she was supporting what Ellen was putting forward. The notion that, um, we should be kind to each other. But now we're going to throw something that she has actively stood against, which is American militarism, the military-industrial complex, and regime change wars, which is all what Bush stands for. So, you know, she's a candidate that I think fair-weather progressives will back when they need to back and pull back when they need to pull back. I have continued to say, and I will continue to say this, that Tulsi, Bernie, Yang, those are my three top contenders right now. Um, so, you know, I I don't know where this is going to go. I, I, I Part of me wishes she was going to be on that debate stage. Uh, because I think she is a much needed voice against the military industrial complex that we don't necessarily hear all the time. Um, I like, I, I, I still like Medicare choice. I'm, I'm not against that idea because I think it speaks to conservatives who might, not, who want the idea of choice and are so worried about the boogeyman of socialism without really realizing what it is. And some of them are older, some of them are set in their ways, and aren't going to change until they see results, but aren't willing to give the system an opportunity to show results. So fuck it. Let's pit it against itself. At the end of the day, I'm still for Medicare for All, Jaya Paul's bill and Bernie's bill. Um, I like them. Um, Andrew Yang has basically said the same thing as... Uh, Bernie, I think, in terms of health care. So, um, you know, I, I do believe that she is a very important voice to be on that debate stage. A unique voice should be on that debate stage. Uh, a genuine voice. But she kind of proved that she can get on that debate stage without actually being on that debate stage third debate she wasn't in it but she still ended up polling to be one of the top tier candidates even though the corporate media won't tell you that she's a top tier candidate she's a fucking top tier candidate just like bernie just like yang just like biden if a pro segregationist if a pro prison industrial complex uh, a toady of the prison industrial complex I'll put it that way. 
All of those people are top tier candidates. And Tulsi Gabbard is too. So she's speaking out against all of that. And I think this might be a little early to call. Because a lot of people are like, why is she even in this? You know, she's not polling very high. Well, the polls are all being rigged. They're all being controlled. She's not on the polls. Bernie's not on some of these polls either. And um, and they're all being kind of controlled and manipulated by the DNC to get the people that they want um, to be in the forefront and then and then pull the wool over people's eyes, manipulate people in a certain way to make them think that that, that, that is the reality that we're living in. So, um, you know, the polls aren't really accurate. What is accurate is what she stands for. And I think that's resonating with a lot of American people. Because she does talk to conservatives. She does talk to libertarians, Green Party people, DSA people, liberals, Democrats, Republicans. That's not a bad thing. That's just That just means that more people are going to vote for this person that has transcended these party lines, that transcends what little fucking pin you have on your, on your fucking uh, pocket or tie, what letters next to your political affiliation. So, that's scary. But it's also something that I think makes her a very powerful candidate to the point where if she doesn't get the nomination, I think she can make a viable independent play. And perhaps that's kind of what she's going for. That if she, by boycotting and veering the attention to let's look at what the DNC is doing in terms of these debates, on how they get people onto those debate stage, and how they use networks like MSNBC, CNN, ABC to prop up the people that they want to prop up, isn't that election manipulation? Aren't we, aren't we fucking with the democratic process? Let's shed that into light. I'm all for that. I like that. So we'll see where it goes. Regardless of what she does, I am, uh, I am going to be in support of Tulsi. I hope uh, the Tulsi supporters out there uh, that enjoy this, the, the, my videos and content and watch it will we'll also support Tulsi uh, in, her, in her decision, uh, whatever it may be. Um, because, because at the end of the day, if she makes an independent play, yeah, I'm in. You know, I'm in. I'm gonna. I'm gonna be supporting that independent play. So, you know, that's that's. It's an interesting thing. I, I don't. You know, I don't think anybody was kind of expecting something like this to happen. Uh, I don't think anybody was expecting something like this to happen. So I'm curious to see where where things go. Hey, thanks for watching this video. Uh, this is part of a little series I do called Road Reflections where I talk to you while I'm on tour uh, about the current socio-political environment, current news stories, uh, debates, that sort of stuff that I don't get to talk about on my podcast, Taboo Table Talk or Forkful of Noodles. It's a little bit looser. And uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this clip. If you guys enjoyed it, uh, you can find the full episodes on my Facebook page. Uh, you can go like Krish Mohan, uh, social vigilante and comedian. And uh, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button. Uh, share this out if you enjoyed it. Um, and another way to help uh, see more regular content is by becoming a patron over at patreon.com slash Thanks again, guys, and we'll see you on the road.